In solving absolute value equa equations, it's going to be increasingly important that we think about order of operations as we solve each of these equations. So first, I'm going to do a guess and check. That's not a valid way in an algebra class to solve. We want to see the algebraic methods, but guess and check can help us uncover some of the techniques that we use to solve algebraically. So for instance, I'm going to guess that x is equal to negative 5. And then I'm going to check to see if that solution is indeed valid. So the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to recopy my equation, but I'm going to insert negative 5 in the place of x. When we insert the negative 5, we're going to follow our order of operations, which will consist of taking the absolute value, and when we do that, we're going to replace our absolute value of negative 5 with positive 5, and then next step, we're going to subtract 3 from that. And so 5 minus 3 is 2, and unfortunately, 2 is not equal to negative 1. <clears throat> but our guess and check helps us uncover the operations that we're using to check, and therefore the inverse operations that we're going to use to solve. When we use inverse operations, we do so in reverse order. So you'll notice that when we checked, we took the absolute value of the value that we replaced x with first and then subtracted 3. So we're going to undo those steps in reverse order. So the very first thing we're going to do is undo that subtract 3 by adding 3 to both sides when we solve. So by adding 3 to both sides of this equation, equation we're going to undo the minus 3 on the left side and negative 1 plus 3 is 2 on the right side. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to undo the absolute value. And undoing the absolute value means stating what the inside of the absolute value is equal to. So if the absolute value of x is equal to 2, then x may either be negative 2 or x may be positive 2. When we undo an absolute value equation where the absolute value is equal to a positive number, it results in an or statement. That's the final solution because we've uncovered what x is. And then I'm just going to write my solution in the form of a solution set. I'll always write my least uh, value in the solution set first, but you don't have to. The order doesn't matter. All right, let's take a look at B. On B, we're going to want, want to resist the temptation to uh, subtract 14 minus 3 first. We can't subtract before we multiply the 3 times the absolute value of x, and we can't actually do that until we uh, know what x is. So we've got to undo in reverse order. Now I want you to think very carefully about how we would tackle this if we had just 14 minus 3 times, let's say, y equals 2. Similar equation. We wouldn't subtract the 14 minus 3. We would, in, in fact, subtract 14 from both sides. And 2 minus 14 is negative 12. And then we would divide by negative 3 to get y equal 4. We're going to do the same thing here. If it helps for you to do this, I recommend that you change your equation, instead of writing it subtraction of the absolute value of x, change it to negative 3 times the absolute value of x plus 14. Means the same thing, but arranging it differently makes it less likely to make a mistake. So we're going to undo the last operation to be done, which would be adding 14 by subtracting 14. And that will give us 2 minus 14 is negative 12. And then we're going to divide by that negative 3. And that will give us negative 12 divided by negative 3 is positive 4. And lastly, we're going to undo the absolute value, which means we're going to uncover what x is. 
and x will either be negative 4 or positive 4. I'll write that in the form of a solution set, but you can leave your answer in the form of an OR statement if you wish. Okay, let's take another look at order of operations from our guess and check sort of a routine here. So guess and check. I'm going to pick my favorite number. I'm going to guess that x is equal to negative 13. So I'm going to replace the x in the equation with negative 13 and just see if it checks. So negative 13 plus 5 would be the first operation because we have to do things inside of the grouping first. So we're going to first add 5 and that will give us the absolute value of negative 8 minus 6 equals 1 and then after we add 5 we have to take the absolute value and taking the absolute value of negative 8 gives us positive 8 and I was real close last thing we need to do is subtract that 6 so subtract 6 and 8 minus 6 is 2 2 is not equal to 1 but I sure was close all right that doesn't really matter. What we're really concerned about is what are the steps that we're going to use to solve this equation. So we need to take that order, add 5, absolute value, subtract 6, and we need to do it in reverse. So instead of subtract 6, we're going to add 6 to both sides of this equation. Adding 6 to the left leaves us with the absolute value of x plus 5. Adding 6 to the right, 1 plus 6 is 7. Now we need to undo the middle step, undo absolute value. So state, what can x plus 5 equal? Well, if x plus 5 is negative 7, its absolute value would equal 7. Or if x plus 5 is equal to positive 7, its absolute value is also, negative, is also positive 7. Now lastly, undoing the add 5 gives us subtracting 5 from both sides. x is negative 12, or x is 2. There are our two solutions. Remember, if you only get one solution to most absolute value equations, you are missing the point. And getting one solution isn't really worth half credit because we're missing the point of the equation. An absolute value equation will many times have two solutions. It is possible to get zero and it is possible to get one solution but um, that's something that we looked at in the uh, introductory part of the video. All right, in D, we want to rearrange our equation first. So we may want to rewrite it as negative two times the absolute value of x minus five plus seven is equal to one. So again, think about your guess and check routine. Guess and check. And I'm just going to guess a nice negative number. I'm going to guess x is equal to negative 1, for instance. So the very first thing I'm going to do is replace the x with negative 1. Now I want you to think about the operations that we have to go through on the left in order to solve this equation, in order to rather check this solution to the equation. So uh, I'm first going to subtract 5. And then I'm going to take the absolute value. And then I'm going to multiply by negative 2. And finally, I'm going to add the 7 to that result. And that gives us negative 5 is equal to negative 1, or negative 5 is equal to positive 1. Again, I'm a bad guesser, but that doesn't matter. Let's think about the order of the operations that we did. We did subtract 5, we did absolute value, and then times negative 2, and finally plus 7. Okay, so when we are doing the operations necessary to solve this equation, we're going to undo the plus 7 first from both sides. That means we're going to subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. And that'll give us 1 minus 7 is negative 6. Now we need to undo the times negative 2. That's by dividing by negative 2. And negative 6 divided by negative 2 is positive 3. 
Now undo the absolute value. If the absolute value of something's three, then that means that same something is either negative three or that something is positive three. Lastly, we're gonna undo the minus five. So add five to both sides. And we get a solution set of two and eight. Remember, your solutions are checkable. All right, last one. And by this point, you can kind of see the, the uh, order of the operations that's happening. In this one, if we were to check a solution, we'd have to multiply by two, add three, take the absolute value, and then subtract one to see if it's equal to 10. So we're gonna undo the, plus, the minus one first, add one to both sides, now undo the absolute value. If the absolute value of something is 11, that something inside is either negative 11 or that something inside is positive 11. Now subtract three, and I'm just gonna do these one at a time and divide by two, or subtract three and divide by two. So we get two solutions either negative seven or positive four. All right, last type of equation. If I'm thinking of two numbers, I'm gonna call them A and B, that have equal absolute values. There are two possibilities for those numbers, how they relate to each other, that is. There's lots and lots of possibility for the numbers, but either those two numbers are equal to each other therefore they'd have the same absolute value, or numbers that have the same absolute value can also be opposites of one another. So A could equal negative one times B. So whenever we solve an absolute value equation where we have two absolute values that are equal, we're not gonna have some operations on the outside to further complicate this, then the contents of the absolute values can be equal to each other, and we're gonna follow that with the word or, and then write on the same line, 2x minus three, the content of the left, is equal to the opposite of the contents on the right. It's gonna be necessary to use uh, parentheses here so that we're clear that we're multiplying the entire quantity x plus six by negative one. By the way, it is, is, it is possible to solve this equation um, here on the right side, and instead, you can write it as negative 2x minus 3 is equal to x plus 6. Uh, it's going to turn out the same regardless. All right, now I'm just going to solve each equation one at a time. Equation on the left, subtract x from both sides, and we get x minus 3 is equal to 6. Adding 3, x is equal to 9. Or, and on the right, uh, we've got 2x minus 3 is equal to, and we need to multiply that negative 1 times both of the terms in the addition. That'll give us negative x minus 6 on the right. And then add x to both sides. And then add 3. Divide by 3, and we get x equal to negative 1. This is, again, checkable. Both solutions are valid. I want you to try the next one on your very own. Pause the video while you attempt this one. Here's the solution to this last example. You'll notice that you can have two equations here, but only one of them actually yields a valid solution. The first equation that we write where the two contents are equal gives us no solution because five never equals negative three and the second equation gives us that single solution. So this, this equation only yields one solution. Where are we kind of expecting two? All right, that's it for the lesson.